I'd like to welcome Marisha Singh Naika. Um, now, Marisha, she's a relationship and family therapist. She's also a pastor at Via Christi Church in Lanasia, and she is the CEO of India Freak Training and Development. Now, she'll be speaking about challenges faced by church people as they emerge from lockdown and they are accompanying emotional and spiritual needs. Over to you, Marisha. Thank you, Luiso. Uh, thank you for that introduction and thank you to Heartlines and to ACM. It is truly an honor to be here with you this afternoon, virtually. So uh, this afternoon, I will be attending to the challenges we face as families and churches as we reconnect and rebuild. And then my colleagues later on will focus on the praxis, looking at the practical interventions and applications. So as we cautiously have emerged from isolation, we face challenges adapting to the new normal of living, of working and playing and having uh, to just follow the safety regulations. Family and churches have adapted to this in different ways. And sometimes it's been helpful ways and sometimes not so helpful. We've witnessed the resilience and creativity of people during this time. We've seen how uh, families have really pulled through the most difficult circumstances. And we continue to hear stories that uh, just empower us and inspire us of great courage. Yet in the midst of these difficulties, on social media, we witness people realize that they got some skills. They could bake and they could cook and they could grow veggies. They could dance and sing. It was like watching lockdown got talent. I'm sure you remember those early days of that. Now we are really social creatures. You know, we thrive on meaningful, healthy connections and relationships, and it's critical to our survival. The church provides an important space for this. And within our South African culture, we value socials and get togethers and brides, and we must each other. And so Corona has also helped us to appreciate the freedoms we once had and hold dear the relationships that we have currently. So the effects of isolation also resulted in loneliness, in fear, in anger and frustration. You know, the disruption to our routines and rituals that provided uh, a sense of comfort has left many shaken, especially for children and adolescents who thrive on some type of routine. We experience more meltdowns in homes. We experience uh, depression. The lack of freedom and the rigid control of uh, our movements have been really frustrating. So we've also been confronted with death and dying, illness and trauma in a more isolating and tragic way. Families had to face the unbearable. They had to say goodbye to loved ones in isolation. Church leaders and pastors had to do funerals online where families were, were not even present. Uh, warm embraces, you know, shoulders to lean on, weeping together that was once common practice was no more. And so people in mourning describe their grief as a double grief. So the difficulties that we face is compounded, multi-layered, and it's experienced intensely. So while all of us are affected by COVID-19, its impact was not the same. For people who were living with their backs against the wall, COVID-19 exacerbated the struggles of inequality, of oppression, of unemployment, of poverty, of homelessness and violence that we were already facing or that people were already facing. Inequalities were brought to the, brought to the forefront. It was magnified and made worse by COVID-19. So South Africa's public health care system already overburdened, under-resourced, faced the greatest strain. That's just one example. Mental health concerns and depression rose in our churches and homes. The disparities in our schools and education system were further exposed. Many children who could not learn online uh, were left behind and further disadvantaged. Now, during the lockdown, we witnessed and experienced also an exponential rise of what the United Nations terms the shadow pandemic or parallel pandemics of uh, GBV, gender-based violence and femicide, 
also of climate change and environmental issues, which have just become, become a topic of pandemic that's been highlighted within COVID-19. And the urgency and the need for us to, to change and do things differently. Internationally on social media, we witnessed the horrific murder of George Floyd. And we saw protests of racism and discrimination spread throughout the world. In our country, we also witnessed police brutality for the unjust enforcement of lockdown rules and people who lost their lives where these investigations are still taking place. And then just more recently, the tragic killing of Nathaniel Dave Julius, a child with special needs who was differently abled, gunned down in the streets of his community of El Dorado Park. Now these problems should be abnormal, but it is commonplace and normal within our COVID-19 and isolation reality. So usually people would going through this, you know, have a space at church where they would find solace, where they would find help, where they would, uh, you know, be able to come and talk and share. But this was not uh, possible because of our, our um, lockdown. And so the lack of worshiping together, gaining insight from sermons, the messages, uh, the, the youth club meetings, the caring uh, of a touch, of a hug, uh, to show solidarity was really, really missed within our church communities. And so I would like to just summarize those points with, with bringing across just some important aspects as we look at the challenges that we now face. So the first one, as we continue at looking at these challenges, we have to become mindful of holistic well-being as churches. Often, uh, we concentrate on the spiritual and emotional effects, and we need to continue doing that. But COVID-19 has showed us clearly that there's a convergence of problems and that we need a convergence and interconnection of solutions. So all of these areas of emotional, financial, uh, social, physical, occupational, people face this. And coming back to our churches, are wanting to, to talk about these realities. And as faith communities, we may not have the skills, we may not have the knowledge or experience to deal with all of this, but we need to tackle this in a way where we integrate and collaborate with each other, where there's multiple stakeholders working together to provide more meaningful support for families in our church community. If we neglect this, to transform our traditional normal interventions will be more likely to result in further issues. The second aspect to summarize is intersectionality. We have to be mindful of the interconnected nature of the various identities that you see there, from nationality to sexual orientation to education and all of the different things that, uh, that we say who we are or that we identify with. It plays a critical role of how people have experienced and been uh, isolation and impacted by COVID-19. And then we become aware that diversity and inclusion builds immunity not only in a biological sense, in a sense to fight this disease, but also in a community sense to fight the injustices and disparities. And then finally, this illustration really uh, shows that we are all in different spaces of, of COVID-19. We are all in this boat. Some of us are in the water. Some have even drowned and lost their lives. It's, it's, we are affected, but we are impacted differently. And so for us to be mindful of this, that our surviving and our thriving depends on our interconnectedness and now our reconnectedness. We need to foster understanding, provide safe places, brave spaces, but more importantly, we need to embody as faith leaders, as church leaders, being safe and brave people, leading us to active solidarity. So thank you so much for listening. Back to you, Luiso.
my bad. You know, I said so much and none of you actually heard that. <laughs> but thank you so much, Marisha. I think, you know, kind of going, um, just listening to you going through your presentation, um, I wish I had really just more time, you know, to, to, to investigate those frameworks that you had in the beginning. I think real powerful stuff.